you know, I'll readily admit that there are some very complex moral issues that arise when you start talking about human cloning. But before you summarily condemn it, I want you to consider this. If Christians can make their own people, they would have way less vested interest in my hoo-ha. It's amazing when you consider just how much a religious dogma centers around the church's ability to control a woman's reproductive cycle. It makes perfect sense, of course, because the further away a person is from zero years old, the less likely they are to buy into your talking snake-based worldview. I mean, sure, you'll convert a grown-up here and there, but if you want to maintain the viability of the church, you need to be squirting new zealots out by the litter. And that's by no means restricted to a single religion. They all do that to one extent or another. Yes, even the Buddhist. And for a demonstration on that, we'll zip over to Myanmar, where a new law has made it essentially impossible for a woman to marry outside of her faith. Of course, there's no need for the law to apply to men, because men get to keep their religion when they get married. Not so much for the women. So Muslims in Myanmar might be considered inferior to Buddhists, but they're not as inferior as women. But of course, it's not always about equality so much as liberty. After all, if nobody of any gender is allowed to get an abortion, the sexes are technically still being treated equally. And as American evangelicals are happy to demonstrate, one way to achieve equality in a bad situation is to fuck the other gender too. That strategy is on full display at Wheaton College in Illinois where they've elected to stop offering health insurance to their students altogether just to avoid, sort of, paying for women's birth control. Wheaton, often called the evangelical Harvard by people taking advantage of the fact that Harvard can't sue them over that, has been fighting hard against the Affordable Care Act's contraception mandate, even after the law was changed so that it doesn't apply to them. But if they accepted the compromise, which, by the way, wouldn't require them to actually provide the birth control, their students would still have access to it for free. And that's too much for Wheaton. So to avoid women being given access to birth control by a third party, Wheaton is dropping insurance for all of its students. Despite the voluntary nature of this insanity and the repeated bullshit concession the Obama administration has made to try to calm these assholes down, the college's attorney was happy to shift the blame to the people that didn't do it. Quote, It's hard to believe the government's making the world better by stopping Wheaton from offering the insurance it used to offer. End quote. And yes, I'll agree. Everything in that statement is really hard to believe. And before we wrap things up, I want to draw your attention to a curious case of trying to cover up a little bit of sexism with a lot of it. So first we'll meet living embodiment of chutzpah, Mark Palmer Edgecombe, who secured funding and planning for a new museum in London under the promise that it would be a woman's history museum. And that's only true in the sense that there were going to be women in the museum. Turns out that the women's museum was just a ruse to build a Jack the Ripper museum that the city almost certainly would have shot down. So, rather than history of women, he went with history of women getting brutally murdered. Same concept, right? So yeah, looks like misogyny is still alive and well around the globe. But the silver lining on that dark cloud is that there's no question I'll be able to scrape together a few more stories for you next week. But between now and then, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.